Hi guys, welcome back to Iron Griffin Studio. Okay, so some of you might remember that a while ago I made this kind of uh, very green, lush, uh, verdant, I guess, um, waystone, an elven waystone. It lights up and it's really cool. But I also made this kind of snowy, wintry waystone, which doesn't light up, but it's still pretty sweet and I really like it. I love wintry terrain, it's really cool. So, I thought I'm going to make a video about how I made this as well. However, I'm going to add some bits to it. Um, and I'm going to add some surrounding terrain to it. I'm going to add some like, like wilderness pieces, just like rocks and trees and stuff like that to, to some bases. And then that can just be kind of accompanied with, with the, uh, the snowy wintry waste on. A long time ago, back in the olden days when I was, it's like literally just a few years ago, um, I made these kind of terrain, this sort of thing. Uh, I wasn't too happy with it. I didn't like the way I did the snow. Like, I effectively ruined uh, a couple of trees, uh, and really I wasn't too pleased. So, I'm going to remake things like this uh, only better, hopefully. So that's what I've been doing this week. I'll, uh, I'll show you how I did it. All right, so starting with the waystone, I basically took a chunk of pink foam, a candle, and a little tool that I made out of a pin and a paintbrush handle. So it's just a steel pin, and the idea is to heat it up on the candle, uh, and slowly, carefully, etch it in your design. I tried with a few little designs here, this is just a, a sample piece, but you can see how easy this is and how, how the form reacts. Alright, so once the designs were etched in to the pink form, I just textured the outside with an aluminium ball and I think another, a rock as well. Uh, just to get some really good stone like texture on it and then I undercoated it in black paint and Mod Podge The same way as I would with any other kind of XPS form Then I found these coasters, these tea coasters, which I was going to throw out and I thought you know what perfectly good basing material because they're made of uh, MDF and they're finished quite nicely. They're nice and flat Just need to take the feet off the bottom and then they're perfectly good. I shaped it into a nice kind of circle and uh, stuck the waystone down and added a few rocks around the edge, a few bits of slate. This is just garden slate, nothing fancy. And then covered it in PVA glue. And then dipped that in my normal basing sand. This is the same sand as I use for everything else, just to get a good variation of texture. And then after spraying the base with some black spray paint, I went over all the stonework uh, in a medium grade, just a quite a heavy dry brush. Just want to pick out all that texture on the on the form, and also on the slate that's on the base as well. And then I really I took a, a lighter, almost white, kind of paint and went over just the very edges where it's a bit sharper on the sides and really just try to kind of edge highlight all that extra, all that stonework. And obviously remember to go over the slate bits on the bottom of the base as well. And then I went to do the base and I, I used a game colour earth, I think it's called, and it's really just a, a good dirt colour. So I painted the whole thing whilst thinning this paint because obviously you don't want to waste too much of this fairly expensive a model paint on the on a piece of terrain and just made sure I went all around it making sure to miss the stones and making sure the foam was completely dry I went over it with a wash I used the normal stabbing kind of motion just to get that wash into all the crevices and I used a kind of a watered down black wash for this I didn't want to be it to be too dark. And obviously don't forget to hit the slate on the base as well. And 
So with the previous waystone that I made, it was very verdant and very lush, uh, a lot of vegetation. Now with this one it's going to be more wintry, so I wanted to have kind of patchy vegetation. And so I just kind of blobbed on some bits of PVA glue and then kind of patchworked this uh, slightly deader looking grass and some completely dried grass uh, in amongst the, uh, the base here. And I wanted to add some moss, so I'm going to use some PVA glue and some fine turf uh, burnt grass by Woodland Scenics, mix them together into a kind of paste and then just smear it on in little patches. You can use a coffee stirrer or even just your finger. Alright, that's the majority of the waystone done, but not the snow. So I'll do the rest of the surrounding bits now and then we'll do the snow at the end. And VT. Now for the surrounding wilderness terrain, I'm going to use a base of Formex. Uh, or it's also called expanded PVC, uh, really just because it's easy to work with and I had some lying around. Uh, and then chose to grab some pieces of slate from my garden and I hot glued them down. I chose slate that was kind of chunky and with really good texture and also kind of a flat bottom just so that it would sit a bit easier and glue a bit better to the base. After the garden slate was stuck down, I just went around it with some PVA glue, trying not to get it on the slate, and just pushed it right up and underneath all the bits, and then covered it in my basing sand again. I spray painted the base a black along with the slate that was on it and then I sprayed the surrounding area uh, a kind of a brown colour. And now I'm just going to paint over all the slate with some very dark grey just to bring it back to a slate kind of colour. And then I dry brushed it with a medium grey to pick out all that texture and all that detail. And then a much lighter grey, almost white, uh, just to really pick up, very lightly pick up all that uh, surface detail. And then once that was dry I added a black brown wash that I would normally use for most of my terrain. and. Just needed to work this into all that detail. Alright, so to add a bit of visual interest to these wilderness pieces, I took some Games Workshop skulls, sprayed them white, and then did a really simple colour scheme of just adding some Agrax Earthshade to them. This will tone down that really bleached white colour and make them a bit more kind of ivory looking. And it will also get in all those crevices and pick out the eyes and the teeth and everything, and uh, really make all the details stand out. Now. A while ago I bought these trees, they were not good, I didn't like them, they just, they were, they were poor, so I spray painted all of the branches brown, and then I thought I can re-leaf them, so I kind of dunked them in a, a big tub of PVA and water, about, about a 50-50 mix, and just shook off the excess, and then dipped it in some Woodland Scenics green turf. Now I really wanted to work that turf into the, all the branches so I just kind of did this sort of motion where I was hopefully picking up as much of it as I could and this stuff dried really well uh, after probably maybe 12 hours I think I left it and it dried rock hard and it seemed pretty durable and very playable. The trouble with scenery is sometimes it, it's a little bit delicate but this stuff is actually pretty durable and pretty solid. I then went back to that hot glue gun and I glued them down to 
some of the bases. Just picked a spot. I didn't want to kind of clutter the base too much. I really wanted to make sure that you could stand on a lot of the bases with, with models and things. And I didn't want to kind of make them too busy. So I placed the trees fairly close to the rocks, uh, leaving enough space for miniatures to, to sit on. And it already looks pretty good, even without any, uh, any more greenery on it. But I wanted to add a few little bits of clump foliage. This is just Woodland Scenics clump foliage again. And I'm actually using no nails glue to secure these down. You're going to make sure that you cover all of the glue with the clump foliage because it kind of dries a little bit white and it shows through at the end. So just make sure that you really cover that glue up. I didn't want to put too much of this stuff on either because obviously it's a winter scene. I didn't want too much vegetation. And then I took some PVA glue and again, the same as the waystone base, just kind of patchworked it round and added bits of flock to it. Different colours as well. It's always good to mix up the colours of flock. Now one of these woodland bases is going to have a little delve in the floor full of water. So I'm going to use the CFX two part epoxy resin, mix it in a cup and I just kind of very carefully sort of spooned it into the area that it needed to be in, trying really hard to avoid the surrounding area. This was a bit tricky honestly and it took a little bit it took a while. I could have tried to pour it, but I just didn't trust myself. And then I just teased it into the areas that needed to be with a cocktail stick or toothpick. Now I'm going to add some snow. So what I'm using is PVA glue and Woodland Scenics Snowflake. And basically you just mix them together. Uh, I would say a 50-50 mix, but what you want it to look like is kind of a fluffy paste. Okay, now I'm no expert on this, but I think that's about the right consistency and just kind of nice and fluffy. So just pick a point, kind of splodge it on in some random areas and then just start kind of dragging it and smearing it out. I'm using a coffee stirrer here and just, I mean, this is, looks very white at the moment. Uh, it will get slightly less white as the PVA glue dries and I just got it all over the rocks, a little bit on the base. Try and get a little bit in the grass as well if you can. And obviously I want to cover the tree, almost entirely cover the tree in it. But this is actually way more difficult than you'd think. I was, it just wasn't sticking to the tree very well, but with a bit of persistence and kind of dragging it down the branches, uh, it stuck eventually in some fairly small clumps. But yeah, be patient with this bit. Maybe, it's, uh, maybe it was just me, I don't know. And then I did the same thing with the waste on. Going back to that bit and just smearing on the top and all around the sides as well. A little bit on the base, and we can see that at the end. Now, I want to add some icicles, so I've done this pre in the previous video and I just used some UV resin, spread it out on some parchment paper, and then dragged it out into some kind of long points, and then cured it with the light, and then cut the icicles away as I needed them. Okay, so now with these Icicles made out of UV resin. I'm going to use UV resin again to stick them to the surface to the rocks So I'm using tweezers because I've got fat fingers and Just dab the end of the icicle and then kind of Stick it to the rock 
it should hold kind of fairly immediately because it's got a little bit of tackiness to it already and then just cure it with the light and there you have it All right, cool, man. All done. Right. Uh, so I want to take time here and mention that I'm really grateful uh, for all the commenters and everybody who likes my videos and things and takes time to leave me uh, feedback and just nice messages, really, that I really appreciate it. And I will try and get back to every single one of you every time that you comment. Um, also, I just recently hit a thousand subscribers, which is crazy. Like, you know, I only started this channel a few months ago and um, yeah it's done it's done better than I thought I never thought I'd get to a thousand subscribers I'm gonna try and go for um, like a hundred thousand now why not might as well try and um, yeah so thanks for everyone who subscribed and everyone who's gonna subscribe from here on out um, I will mention my Instagram is is up and running there so feel free to check that out and follow me on there and I will try and post semi-interesting stuff occasionally and maybe it's just models that I've painted um, or interesting stuff tips and tricks that I do around the workshop here workshop it's a bedroom it's a small bedroom but you know what I mean it's the studio <laughs> so yeah uh, hopefully I can post some some cool stuff for you guys to uh, to enjoy in there that's about it I think that's it for this video um, Really glad with the way these, um, with this waist on and all this scenery hey, that it goes with. I'm really glad it all kind of worked out the way it did. It's pretty cool. Um, I will mention I'm, I'm a pretty big like Space Wolf collector from Warhammer 40k and they use loads of wintry terrain and I just love wintry terrain. So um, yeah, it's really, really quite handy for me. Hopefully you like those and I can get another video out to you soon. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you again next time. Stay safe. And as usual, happy crafting.